Louisville. A city just further to the west than Cincinnati, but not by far, and yet settled about the same time. Also along the same river, the Ohio. An intriguing city with a colorful history. A city that considers itself part of the South, interestingly enough, and the gateway to the South. Yet, we're going to find in this exploration that Louisville is much more than a gateway between any physical regions. It's truly a gateway to the old world. And this was a very surprising exploration, one that is beyond words to describe. We'll begin our exploration of Louisville by looking at the bird's eye view map of 1876. Now we have the standard historical story with the founding of Louisville by Colonel George Rogers Clark in 1778 at the behest of the state of Virginia who granted the town the charter and since the United States was supposedly in the Revolutionary War at that time and was receiving assistance from France, they named the town Louisville. Strangely enough, the history though is uh, very, well, missing from that point on. We know supposedly that uh, Lewis and Clark started their expedition around Louisville and we know that supposedly people began to settle in the city Although it's odd that when they chartered it, they already chartered it as a city in the 1820s. Although it only had 7,000 people, so why didn't they charter it as a town? Okay, maybe a difference in definition. But outside of that, there's really no written history or any history of note until the 1850s when there was some sort of ethnic clash between the Protestants and the Catholics. Oddly enough, it involves the Know Nothing Party at that time, or the American Party as they called themselves, and the Democrat Party. Very strange. Then the Civil War happened. And of course, we know in the Civil War, between 600,000 to a million Americans died on both sides. And most of them died of disease. And yet somehow this vast drop in the population had no negative effect on the growth of the country. And it did not affect Louisville, although they say that when the Confederate veterans returned, because they weren't decimated in battles for four years in the Civil War, even though we're told that they were, the orphan brigade out of Kentucky was completely destroyed and how they backfilled and had individual replacement in that unit is another matter of debate. But we're not talking about the Civil War here. We're just talking about Louisville and supposedly Louisville was taken over by Confederate veterans, even though it's close to the north. And in 1876, it's only 98 years after it was quote unquote founded by Colonel George Rogers Clark. And that'll be good enough for a lot of people. That history will be good enough. It doesn't matter that there's little else documented between those times. That's enough. And they could see the city having grown up in this short amount of time. And one other note, the population of Louisville grew from 10,000 in 1830 to 100,000 in 1870. Never mind that there was a civil war. That didn't stop the population growth. And never mind that the standard of living or life expectancy was much shorter then. You can grow a city and it's no real issue. Now one final note is that this is from 1876 and we see this bustling city. And it should be noted that at that time the United States was in the panic of 1873, or as they called it, the Long Depression. Again, this does not stop or affect growth. They probably could have had 27 pandemics between 1830 and 1870 and still have had a population growth of 1,000%. Well, let's start taking a look. What do we have here? Well, it's not a castle. It's a defensive tower, right? Why exactly do we have these ornate castles, defensive towers, arches, whatever we want to call them, on either side of this railway bridge? Because there is one over here. What is the purpose behind that? I guess it's so anybody riding on the train knows that they're going across a bridge and they're going across the river. Now we're told that one of the main reasons that Louisville grew so fast was because of its position on the river and I guess they just knew they wanted it to be a city. Very interesting though when we look at the buildings. These buildings all look very blockish and there doesn't seem to be much to them. Yet at the same time when we look a little deeper in this image and we look at some of the 
more civic buildings or some of the churches, we do get that idea of the opulence and the size. And of course, all these buildings are numbered. Well, here's a nice one here. It's as though they're trying to mark the distinct buildings, but then also try to hide what the real nature of the city is within these images and within this bird's eye view map. Now, of course, we know that anybody can draw anything to give whatever impression they want. So who knows how close to reality this really was. Look at this back here. Some sort of depot. And then here, 40, will have Mail High School. And we'll look at that later. This was supposedly the original version of it. And it's another story where they had to rebuild and replace the building, of course. Although somehow it was in near the same location. So make of that what you will. A lot of mystery, just looking at the bird's eye view map. But it goes back to the main theme for these, that this seemed to be some sort of real estate focus. And they had the major buildings marked out, and those are the buildings that they bothered to number down here. You know, for example, the courthouse, the city hall, those are the beautiful buildings. But then you obscure it with all these very plain looking buildings that are very squarish and kind of look like brutalist architecture. Makes sense to me. Well, let's take a look at what Louisville really looked like in the past and what survived to the present. To go further into Louisville, it's yet another location where we had one of these incredible expositions, and Louisville hosted the Southern Exposition in 1883. Now, I haven't really covered expositions much in detail on this channel yet, and the reason for that is many other channels have covered it, and the other reason is a lot of the evidence is missing, or it's been torn down from that time. It's also difficult to get an accurate account of what truly happened. Regardless, it is fascinating that Louisville hosted the Southern Exposition in 1883, and they apparently had a mammoth building there that took several blocks and had some nice smokestacks with it, too. You also see all the other photos and see how well built out Louisville supposedly was. Now, granted, it's not a photo. Let me specify these are drawings, but we had photography at that time. It was supposedly so difficult, and yet it was so easy. Again, it goes back to what I like to say are conflicting accounts. And Louisville was flooded as well. So... All the peculiar benchmarks for a city happening in Louisville. We've had an exposition, a southern exposition, it's not a world's exposition, and it did happen 10 years before the well-known Chicago exposition. We've had a flood, and we also had a cyclone that hit, and it falls along the usual time frames too, because the cyclone hit in the early 1890s. We'll look at what kind of damage that did to the city. And you'll say, well, it's in a floodplain, it's very natural that the city would flood. Of course. Yet, isn't it interesting how many large cities that we have that happen to be in floodplains? Here's a photograph from the early 20th century. I could give you the exact year, but what difference does it make? Because anybody can associate any year with a photo, and we see the usual hallmarks. We have what looks to be a road with a lot of dirt on it, and we'll say, oh, the horse carriages brought all that dirt in there and we had tracks and yet if you look closely you can see the sign that there's some sort of cobblestone nice towers back there in the distance too very well built out and then you look at the buildings and you see the same hallmarks and here we have the first christian church and you know nothing gets more christian than having that uh, greek romanesque appearance does it lots of pillars and columns and large foundation stones and it looks like it's something out of the old roman forum in fact it looks exactly like many of the roman forum buildings that were from the movie cleopatra and even from the remnants of the ruins as they call them in rome right now here it is in louisville intriguing photo from the early 20th century and now another very late 19th century photo supposedly and you see what looks to be a very large, ornate building with a tower on top of it. And we wonder what that is, but I also call to attention the other structures around it. This is in the late 19th century, and we've already gotten a feeling that there's something that's amiss with Louisville, with the historical account that we've been given. 
founded in the 18th century and yet little history until some supposed ethnic clash. And here it is, the 1860s post office, a Renaissance revival post office. Ah, there's that lovely archaeological, or excuse me, architectural, may as well say archaeological, architectural terminology that we love to throw at these buildings. Credible tower, very large, large building with the scaling seen on the columns, and of course the large foundation stones, because if you don't build a building like this, how are you going to know it's a post office, especially in the 19th century? I'm sure it will not surprise you to know that this building was torn down during that uh, period of uh, revival. I believe it was torn down in the 1940s and you know during World War II no less because apparently the United States and Louisville had nothing better going on during that time frame so they figured they better tear the building down. Interesting when you look at the debris and you can even see what's left of the columns there. I wonder what kind of effort it took and how much time it took them to really tear down this building. That was made by the finest processes and very difficult labor and effort in the 19th century. Well, this is what's left of it. What do you think? What do you think's the story behind this post office? And how difficult do you think it was for them to tear it down? Let me know in the comments. It wasn't just the post office, though. There's also a lot of amazing churches in Louisville, and this shows one being torn down. So, you see, even piety is not going to save your building from the wrecking ball. We see that typical incredible window and we can talk about our theories of how that had something to do with sound and now we come to the high schools in louisville and this particular beauty is dupont manual high school supposedly built in 1934 although you'll find a narrative repetition with the high schools in louisville that they were built in the 19th century and then they built nicer ones at some point either in the early to the art deco period quote unquote of the 20th century dupont manual high school you need a very beautiful and ornate tower if you're going to operate a high school. Perhaps that's to inspire the high school students when we talk about the concept of learning how to think instead of what to think. But don't worry, we have plenty of people around now that'll gladly tell you what to think. And you better think what they tell you what to think. Right, Larry? Right, Larry? In any event, this is an overall view of it and a very incredible structure with the standard tower that we tend to see on high schools. I think the only thing that's missing is a clock face and built during the Great Depression because funds were widely available. This is Mail High School and it has a similar story as DuPont High School where it was originally founded in the 19th century and then rebuilt in the early 20th century as this uh, remarkable structure. Beautiful ornate detail, you see the scaling on the columns and you see the protruding little area there. The Lincoln Savings Bank, built in 1906 and demolished in 1975. Of course, I really find the construction year dubious, although I'm quite certain that they tore it down in 1975. That was about the time frame that they were doing that urban renewal that began in the 1960s in the United States. Beautiful building. And you see the same hallmarks or trademarks, if you will, with this building. A very detailed base, a different kind of center section and then a very unique top couple of floors and looking closer at the top floors isn't it interesting how the height of these floors seems to be rather exceptional and look at the detail on the top of this building this reminds me of one that i saw in san francisco that did survive to this day although it was after they desecrated it and then a ground look at some of the buildings in louisville and you see some of those base stones for the construction of these buildings. And we really have to wonder how long these buildings were actually here. We'll be told that, well, it's all late 19th century, early 20th century. Look at those stones. And in full disclosure, I did live in Louisville for a time in the 2000s. And it was before I really had the eyes that I do now. And here's another ground photo from 1927. And we see some paved streets with the old trolley tracks. And even a light in 1926, very impressive, some towers in the distance. And you see all the buildings close up and you have the same hallmarks. Look at the detail that went into the ground level of these buildings that we just don't see today. And of course, we've been over the usual reasons for why. And now let's go into the preserved housing section of Louisville. This is what's called Old Louisville. Now, to Louisville's credit, they do have a historical preservation district. 
And this is one of them. And of course, we'll be told that these are Victorian architecture style buildings, but it really doesn't matter what they tell us the style is because they've got names for every style. Yet I'm also supposed to be told to believe that Germans believed in dress right dress and are very methodical people, and they would accept many conflicting architectural styles. Here's a picture of the same area from the late 19th century. And we see all the detail in the buildings, the unique foundations, the wondrous towers and windows. For some reason, this bears a striking resemblance to what we saw in Duluth, although the stories of Duluth and Louisville couldn't be more different. And yet at the same time, they're the same. We're told Louisville was founded <laughs> in the late 18th century, but yet what's preserved from it is all from the 19th century. And now let's look at the beautiful churches of Louisville. This is the Walnut Street Baptist Church. 1845 it was founded, and in 1902 the church moved to its current location. So again, you see this familiar theme, a building in the 19th century and a new building in the 20th century. This is St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. Don't have an exact build date on it sometime in the 19th century. You can lease this building today, apparently. Very beautiful. I love the little towers on the top of it. I wonder why we don't build like that today. And look at the size of the stones on that. And here, this beauty is the first Lutheran church. Founded in the 1850s and built again in 1902, the same time of the other church. Apparently there was this um, massive run on building beautiful churches with amazing towers and wondrous detail in Louisville. Really wonder how they did it. Why is it we don't build buildings like this now? Well, we get the usual slew of reasons, I'm just speculating. I love that window. I love the concentric detail in the architecture of that window. And here we have another early 20th century street photo where we see the brick street and again the rails. What came first, the bricks or the rails? That was a great question. I like the little lighting there. And you also have what appears to be a lot of wiring. And this is right at the turn of the century from the 19th to the 20th century. Well, I don't know, maybe Nikola Tesla showed up. Oh yes, this is from 1901 and this is the Knights Templar Arch. Now, is this a staff and stucco building? Well, why would you build a staff and stucco building in an arch like this with a beautiful dome on it and a crown and horses just to be a temporary structure? I really wonder what's the story with this. And keep in mind that not 10 years before this, the city was hit by a cyclone tornado of the F4 variety that supposedly caused massive damage. This is just an incredible structure. Even if it was temporary, how exactly did they do it? And why do we see so many arches like this that were supposedly done in this temporary fashion. One really has to wonder if it was already there and then they just put a fresh speck of paint on it or just put the stucco over it and now we're told that it's temporary. What do you think about this one? For me this is something that's just one of those extraordinary structures and clearly it did not endure. Wonder why. Yet it's there. They're running trolleys under it. And here we have the famous Churchill Downs, what a lot of people know Louisville for. You need to have a grandstand with incredible towers on top of it. Funny that we don't see grandstands with towers like that on top of it. This is from the very early 20th century as well. And almost as though the entire city was uh, built in the early 20th century. After the part of it was built in the late 19th century, despite the fact that it was founded in the 18th century. Make of it what you will. This is the Columbia Building. Another very early skyscraper from the early 20th century. And again, we really have to wonder what the actual build date on it was. Very beautiful and ornate foundation stones and the little arch, and yet detailed along the roof and the top floor. And you see that on the higher floors. Again, another building style that we don't do today for various reasons. There's something impressive about the subtlety of these older buildings. And now we go to other beautiful residences in Louisville. The Conrad Caldwell House, supposedly built in 1893. Yes, of course, the finest architectural efforts of 1893 with incredible beautiful towers, amazing arches, and small columns at the bottom of it. Oh, there's also steps going up to the floor. I guess you need to walk up steps so you feel important. I like the little balcony up there on the second, or is it the third floor? This is Grawmeyer Hall. Maybe I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. University of Louisville, constructed in 1926 to resemble the Roman Pantheon. I guess the president of Louisville University needs to have a building like the Roman Pantheon so they feel appropriately educational. 
You go across universities in the United States and frankly across lands and you'll see buildings like this. Interesting that the Roman Pantheon was constructed hmm, over a thousand years ago. I'm going to be honest with everyone. Sometimes I just get really, really tired of these narratives and these stories that we're all willing to believe. Okay, now I'm motivated again. We have the Louisville City Hall and a very beautiful building with a huge tower and a clock on it. So everyone who works at City Hall knows what time it is. Another beauty from the 19th century, although frankly they can tell us whatever year they want to on it. And we see the stylings of the little Roman forum over there and the scaled columns. I love the foundation stones. And now the skyline of Louisville from the very early 20th century. 1910, we're told, but who really knows? Look at how well built out this city is. And you look at some of the skyscrapers that are already present. You see the towers and the steeples of the many churches. And you also see that the buildings that we thought were very plain and brutalist have a lot of detail to them, especially when we look closer. So we go back to that initial bird's eye view that we saw of Louisville, and we see a very conflicting picture right here. What's the real story with this city? There are so many conflicting narratives and so many conflicting accounts. And yet when you look at a photo like this, you're clearly looking at a modern city that is far more beautiful than any of our modern cities. Of course, we'll say that we have all these incredible skyscrapers that are made of glass and steel and are very durable, right? Yet you look at something like this and it paints a very different picture of what this city truly was. And now we come to my favorite part of Louisville, the Louisville Water Tower. This beautiful water tower was constructed, they tell us, in 1860. 1860, beautiful columns, beautiful detail. Again, the Roman Forum there on that building and statues all across it representing the pantheon of gods and goddesses. Why exactly was that needed as part of a water tower that was built in 1860, before the United States Civil War? There are just so many questions abound with this structure. It is beautiful. Supposedly, it's also the oldest water tower in the United States. Why? Why is it needed? Why did they need to do this? This story gets better. It was torn down by the cyclone tornado of the F4 variety that hit Louisville in 1890. Although this photo in and of itself is highly dubious, make of it what you will. But the official account tells us that this cyclone caused a lot of damage, and Louisville had to be repaired after this damage, and it knocked down the water tower. And yet they rebuilt it. So, not only did they originally build it in 1860, they rebuilt it in the 1890s. Again, no limitations on what they could do. Oh, did you know that you can get married, and that apparently this is a very popular site to get married at. It's featured on the website The Knot. So if you're looking to get married at a beautiful area in Louisville, go hit the old water tower. Now, if that's not telling, I don't know what is. A structure built in 1860 is so beautiful, so, so ornate, and so amazing that it's featured on the website The Knot, so you can go get married there. And this continues to this day. And why wouldn't you? Look how beautiful it is. Look at those columns. Even the cruddy information plate that they put on it, and who knows what year this structure was originally built or what its original purpose was. I am highly critical of it being a water tower of some sort, and that's what these structures always are. And here is the other water tower that they built on the left, supposedly a newer structure than the one on the right. Yes, they actually say this on the website. And I'm not going to insult you or waste your time by showing you this because this account is laughable. And this is why during the entire exploration of Louisville, I used the word absurd. There are a lot of absurdities with the narrative account that we're given with this city. Now, we looked at recent structures in other amazing so-called American cities. And yet, the story in Louisville, the story just really stands out. How can you even look at this and say there's any comparison? Clearly, the structure on the right is far more beautiful, far more ornate, and required a lot more building ability. And this is a much older photo where we see them together. Black and white, and we'll be told that it's from right around the turn of the century, right after they repaired the structure on the left. Or they could also tell us it was from before the cyclone hit. It doesn't really matter. Yet, nevertheless, you have this photographic evidence of this beautiful structure that existed, built in 1860, before the one on the right, as we're looking at it from another angle. And yet, it's just incredible to see these large smokestacks and... 
what, what was really going on here? It's when you see a photo like this that the entire narrative crumbles. And if you're still going to believe what they tell you, you really have to have a lot of goggles over your eyes. Or you just have to believe whatever Larry tells you and just accept his insults. More recently, they removed the statues from this so-called water tower. Now, why would they do that? Why would they remove these statues? Clearly, that looks like good old Poseidon there. Yes, we remember he was uh, featured very prominently in the movie Clash of the Titans, even headlines. The original one from the early 1980s, the remake, the only god who spoke was Zeus. So yeah, I'll give you my feelings on that. But why would you remove the statues? What's the point behind that? And of course we'll be told, well, it's for historical preservation. No, it's very obvious that uh, it's very difficult to defend why you have statues out there, especially when you still have people going out there to get married to this day. Such a beautiful structure, and not just the tower itself, but the forum building behind it. And this is what we have in Louisville today, one of our most beautiful buildings from the 1960s, and we'll be told that this is progress. Yes, look at that, that's progress. Brutalist architecture that looks like it's something from what we're told is the Soviet area. Isn't it interesting that the United States was supposed to be the bastion of freedom during the Cold War period, and yet they were building buildings like that? And finally, the story of my great-grandfather that you might remember came up in the Cincinnati video. Well, unfortunately, his story ended in Louisville. And what I do know from his history is that he went to many of the different expositions. And this is where his life and his story unfortunately ended. Central State Hospital in Louisville. A very incredible structure in and of itself, and you can look up the history of this building, and it has a very disturbing history and a lot of disturbing accounts to it. And unfortunately, the ending of my great-grandfather's life is a very disturbing account, which it is a story I'm going to share in an upcoming video because there's a lot more detail within it that is beyond the scope of this exploration of Louisville. So you've seen that in Louisville we have conflicting narrative accounts. We have many different aspects of buildings from different eras. And yet somehow we're supposed to believe that the narrative account that we're given is true for Louisville. Even though we have virtually no history from its so-called founding in the 18th century until about the mid-19th century where we have some ethnic clash. Well, make of it what you will. Tell me what you think in the comments. As always, ask questions, explore yourself, and you'll restore the world. Thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe.